It's like sticking the fork in the socket. Hey, we are back. I, I don't know where we cut off, but thanks for bearing with us. If you did bear with us, um, hopefully the magic of the editors can knit it all this back together uh, to make a sound professional. Beautiful. Like it is truly. You were talking, but. I was yeah, it's like, so like there's nothing like, hey, where everybody was. But so anyway, we were talking about just... Volkai Contemptors. We were. Volkai contemptors of how that essentially all Marines uh, and even in Chaos Space Marines and, and all those various factions would just have a couple of Volkites, you know, and then build around that. Uh, and then now I think that the way that things are, have, have kind of gone with, with Thick hmm. City and other things that have damage reduction and, and, and the like get that, that damage to and even paying any amount of points for it, mm-hmm. maybe less and less appealing. And so people are going to be forced into finding different things, which I think is going to be better for list design and also better for, for people out there that are trying to maintain and represent the faction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's doing the I same mean, thing with three nights too, right? Go ahead, Adam. I'll wait. We'll Was I sure coming through? All right. Am, am, am I audible? You're coming through. You're good. You're good. Beautiful. Um, yeah, it's 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 always uh, a bit of a stale thing for the meta when there's just a one-fits-all option for multiple factions, especially essentially two super factions, all Astartes and uh, all impugned by default, and all Chaos had this like crutch to just be like, well, I can just take, I want to be a shooting army, I'll take two of these and be a shooting army. So actually, yeah, well, it works. Yeah. I don't know. It did. It was worked amazingly, especially in the Kari yeah. and meta. We were just like, mm-hmm. and that boat's dead, and that boat's dead, and that boat's dead. It was great. <laughs> Yeah, no, I definitely. I mean, I, I can't. I don't want to fault any of them for for that at all. Uh, but it it, it mm. does seem like things have changed, and there's now new things in the in mm-hmm. the ecosystem out there uh, that that make that less appealing. And that would that would mean uh, that people are going to have to go you know into the tank for list design. And I think that's why that's when we're going to see some of those Thousand Suns units start to develop. My main question though is is that do Thousand Suns since they don't have something like a Dread Knight and Magnus can't be everywhere all over the table you know mm-hmm. are they going to have <laughs> what it takes to, to to really hang in there if people are already teching for gray knights and i don't and i don't mm. just mean list design i mean things like even abhor the witch you know i had a had a great discussion yeah. and we've talked about this before you know with it with a buddy a few days ago you know he's like man you know do you ever take this character or this thing in your list anyway and i was like well mm. if you're taking one psyker you kind of you shut yourself off to being able to score points yeah in the tournaments and and it's so that's what i mean even that like the game itself has this tech that could be a potential against the thousand suns do the thousand suns have what it takes in spite of all that and and i maybe not in spite maybe that's the, the not the best way of describing it but can they overcome that yeah see i've seen a lot I of think- the thousand sun lists that are actually taking they don't they don't care about that like they're just becoming less characters and a bore the witch in a lot of these lists now is a trap mm-hmm. Because killing three bricks of skits, you might as well be taking no prisoners at that point. Like, what, <laughs> and I, yeah. I hate, I hate not taking a psyker and giving up power that you could have because I might be able to use this secondary against these two armies and get ten points for it. Yes, and you might even come across them. You may never. Come and you might not them. even come across no. them. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. That, that that is that's a fair that's a very fair way of uh, of thinking about it. But you know, I, I think with the saturation that we've seen of gray knights, you're going to come across it. So I, it's it's just a decision uh, element that players yeah, have to course. make. And these players have obviously said, "We don't care. We're going for it." You know, and, mm. and I think they're we're going to see some good exactly. list design, especially coming out of, of Australia. That's what I like to see for sure. I know. So we're, the Xeno Super Faction is where we're going next. It is surprising there's only one Renegade Knight, and that was actually brought up in the chat. And thanks for thanks for for saying something. Yeah, um, yeah I would have probably expected to see a, f- a few more Renegade Knights with the success that we've been seeing on there. They travel well. Uh, you don't have you don't need as many models most of the time, uh, and they're they're really well, strong you, with the yeah, with the update. They got. We have six Imperials exactly too. Right. So I mean. Yeah. Usually we see the Renegades at about 50 to 60% of what the Imperial Knights are. So yeah. I would have expected to see at least three uh, Renegade Knights, uh, but as soon as I saw the Imperial ones. What's the, what's the rest of the Super Factions? Well, let's have a look. See, so the Xeno Super Faction, we have three Necrons, 12 Orcs, and Tau still aren't making an appearance yet. 12 Orcs taking top podium on uh, number like representation here. Orcs, man. They just love Orcs in Australia, don't they? That's wild. Orcs, orcs. We're well, gonna see is, how many orcs are represented this. in the two tournaments we're talking about here. There, I mean, orcs are fun. Nobody can deny a that. Lots. And, oh, and they're they're, so they're basically they're still one of the tops of the heap. 
Yeah, they are. And in, and in they addition have so to many builds. Orcs, I was about to say, Orcs don't have one homogenous build. Mm. They literally have three lists that I can tell that can win any event on any damn day. They've got a shooting variant, they've got a melee pressure variant, and they've got a tweener. And that's a really for players. Like the what is your start? You just play whichever one you want. You can play a variety. You can a variety of clan cultures. Mm. I yeah. mean, there's yeah. The book has depth. You know, is, is when when well, I'm asked, it, you know, what 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 do I think is a great codex or whatever? And when I think the greatest mm. codexes have multiple builds that you can draw from, it's not just, I mean, you can, don't worry, every faction can be great, but sometimes at a tournament setting, there's just like that one build that emerges as the, is the dominant one. Uh, I think the best codexes have multiple well, things you can, this is, you can pull out of them. Agreed. Agreed. And this is why gray knights just isn't that exciting. It, it's why it's why it, it just isn't that exciting for yeah. people sometimes. I know a lot of people I don't know who doesn't like moving around dropped off for other things. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, but it, yeah, but it's it's the same list. You never get the variant. You never get the variants. The, the, that list is locked in. You've got about three hundred points to mess with in that list to kind of make it your own. You play orcs. You got two thousand points in a two thousand point list that you can just make your own. And I feel I feel like yeah. that attracts people to it. Well, yeah, something that's nights- like, it's 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 the fact that when you're going to these really competitive tournaments too, if you bring an army that people always know the build for, like you go into you go into a tournament saying, I'm ready for grenades, I know exactly what the grenades are. Exactly. Like, I'm ready for orcs. You can't say that. You can it's never say cool. I'm mm-hmm. ready to fight orcs because there's so many different builds for <laughs> exactly. it. Um, that's, that's actually, the, the great night decision point is do I take uh you know interceptors or not? Yeah. You know, that's, that's that's the decision yeah. point. Soon it will be how many exactly. dread knights will actually take because looks like they're going up in points. Well yeah man. They got looks like they're going up exactly right. Uh, what's the hive mind go for us? The, this before you know, just as a note on that is like you know we saw some teasers from the Warhammer community today about some points and stuff, and you know we know there's missions are changing, uh, coming down the pipe. This mm-hmm. this the meta could be turned on its head. If you have not already subscribed mm-hmm. to the show, please do, uh, because we're going to be telling you about the impact of, of those those things play out in the reality of what list of people are actually taking. So you're gonna you're gonna want to be here for that if that's something that interests you. Well, that's right, and we know what we're talking about. We do this every week, so this is the place to listen. Well, right? to, well at least one of those statements is true. We do. This every week. <laughs> Do this every week. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Joe did the, the hive mind super faction. What's right, going the hive on? Hive mind super faction. It's no hive mind. Eight tyranids. It's still no GSC guys. Why? Why aren't you here yet? Come on, guys. <laughs> this may be too soon. Are they allowing it? They might not be allowing it. Although I, you know, I think we heard over the weekend <laughs> that that maybe so GSC I, took down a big event for. Sorry, I'm going to say that again, Paul. Oh, we got an anecdote. Okay, sorry. We got we got Adam actually following up on this here because we haven't, haven't submitted a difficulty. So at the end of the season, we see many super, super faction players who have played me, played various different factions within, say, Chaos, pile on what is perceived to be the best list in that faction at the time of the finals. So example, Tyranids with Crusher Stampede. Oh, so here yeah. we go. That's why we yeah. have the eight Tyranids here that, yeah. have, that have basically just said, you, you know, we're not going to play Gene Sealer Cults. We're not going to play the Hive Mind. You know, we're, yeah. we're going... Uh, I guess something like Crusher Stampede or just, or really if you dilute and go into the hive mind to get the blips, right? I mean, Dustin, yep. you can, you can speak to this probably better than oh, anybody absolutely. about, about how, what is the, the appropriate amount of gene stealer cults to sprinkle into a list. And then what are you actually sacrificing? How many hive guard essentially are you sacrificing if you break out of that, that one singular faction? Yeah. See, that's the thing too. When you're bringing in the hive mind, you're, you're nine times out of 10, you're bringing it for blips right now especially if the new uh, new stuff isn't allowed yet. So it's, uh, most of them are going to be very minimum. It's going to be like a Magus with mind control and one, two, maybe three Oclite squads just for blips to block off to make sure that you're not going to be hit by any first turn charges or flyers that are going to hit your backline and kill your hive guard. It's, it's an alpha strike protection and it's 300-ish points, not even. Like it's a lot less than that. So I guess uh, 200, 250 points and two CP to protect from that stuff. And nine times out of 10, that's so it's worth that it. That is what um, 10% of your army for uh, uh, insurance, 100% yeah. insurance against the, that level of alpha strike. Yeah, exactly. Even less if you're really going like absolute bare minimum, it's 175 points. Like it's, it's great to protect you. And if you have that many points in hive guard, you need them to survive. If you go second, yep. you need them because they are your, they are your, your, your bread and butter. But it seems like, you know, maybe they're, these players are opting against that. Like, we don't care about that, especially if they're playing Crusher. You know, it's like, okay, fine. I well, don't care if you get closer, closer. Bot saves yeah. me a turn. So, you know. 
Now the Crusher Stampede is a different. It's a different beast right now. They have a lot of more monsters. So coming into the Hive Guard, the Hive Guard aren't as essential in the Crusher Stampede list. I find, and like you're saying, if they come close to you with your Crusher, like great, thanks for making my job easy on me. Because I'm big. I don't. Ha I don't like going around terrain. Come to me. That's much easier. So <laughs> yeah, if you that, come through this wall, if you come through uh, this wall, I don't have to go around it. It's perfect. Thank you. For it's like that. a sack lunch, you know, or yeah, it's plus, like Uber Uber Eats of the. Uh, yeah, you know. exactly. Plus, ironically, like Hive Guard with a five up involved being in Crusher Stampede, they're a little bit more durable too. It's nice. It's nice. Like, yeah, I like so, it. what are we seeing in the Eldari Super Faction? In the Eldari Super Faction, to finish it all off, we have two mixed Eldari, nine Drakari, four Harlequins, and a Suriani as well. So, the faction podium. Orcs at the top with 12, and then Death Guard Custodes, Sisters and Drukari all at nine, and then Tyranids at eight. The meta is already starting to get a little shift. Do we see those Custodes sneaking in there? Tyranids sneaking in there. It's things are changing. It's exciting to me. I well, like seeing Well, this. with that many Harlequin players, I wonder if it is, you know, like like maybe Adam was surmising before, is that this is a play for um, you know, faction brackets, faction winners uh, to load in to either you know get a get a uh, uh, an award there at the event, or to give them some really great points uh, to slingshot them into uh, the faction bracket for the um, ITC. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Like you were saying, this the end of the end of the season, so we uh, we're look we're looking now uh, to try to get those last points to kind of get that faction bonus, get the get the top faction that everybody's looking for. And Harlequins are they're. I'm not going to say like they're a popular one, but not a top player popular one. So there's not that many people that are going pure Harlequins and trying to get the faction bonus, right? So it's it's one of you've been playing it. You can go for it. And you can do it for, still for sure. The things that Harlequins were great against, we don't see them as much anymore. I think it's one of those things. Yeah, the true. Harlequins are uh, the thread. It's one of those where the the threat of Harlequin, Harlequins existing uh, is a is a good thing, uh, but then what what they're great at taking out just haven't has not manifested really that much in the events. And so I think that's that's kind of made them go on the back burner. But yeah, this is one of those things to where if you've been a Harlequin player, you got a couple of wins under your belt, you definitely won all the points from this. Uh, and you know, the the faction uh, brackets or the faction winners is a, a pretty prestigious thing year on year. I know people that have won those and they're, it, it, it's very cool to get it, uh, hear your name called and be proud of it. Yeah, I got mine. Force of the hive mind, buddy. You know what we're talking about it. <laughs> so I'm, it's I'm so bad. exciting. How am I coming through, boys? You're 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 good right I can now. Hear you're, you. you're gonna give a give a go to the top players in attendance. Beautiful. Try bring Perfect us timing. back strong just in time. We have our top players in attendance, and these are my boys, most of these people. I play people I know very close and uh, I love them all. So in first for our top players in attendance, we have Liam Hackett, currently ranked second in Australia. He's playing golf orcs. Now I'll tell you that this is a big deal what has happened here in the realms of Australia. Uh, this is a big deal. So Liam made his name playing Mega Knob Orcs in 8th edition, took him to WTC for Team Australia, went undefeated, like took all comers, was an absolute juggernaut. Um, in 8th edition, he's barely played Orcs. In fact, in the last 12 months, he's only played Thousand Suns. And then for Uprising, he's pivoted back onto Orcs, unbeknownst to anybody, just out of nowhere. He's like, bang, on a super tuned, amazing Orc list. And here it is. It is Gosh, means it is a battalion. I mean, that's... Yeah. He he he's got he's, he's got it in his hand. He he's knows. he's been keeping this on the back burner, percolating, playing 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 some test games that no one knows about, and bang, slotted in for the championships. Um, he's got talent and a super heavy auxiliary, both of Goffs. Starts off with Makari, a boy, a war boss, three times ten. Truck boys, five, and those three scrap jets. Adam, we may be again? losing you. So l uh, let me jump in there. Is, is that Makari, uh, Weird Boy, War Boss, three times 10, Beast Snacker Boys, 10 Truck Boys, five Commandos, three Scrap Jazz, three Rucker Trucks, two Kill Rigs, uh, a truck, and then Gasgol. The dirty list. I love that list. I actually really like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Beast Snacker Boys. I mean, you know, that there's been a lot of criticism that, you know, we have not seen a bunch of boys on the table in favor of more toys. That's the orc. The thing is like, do we have boys? Do we have toys? You know, there's, and, and those yeah. two, two, uh, like mindsets don't often meet, but here, this seems like a pretty good conjunction to those things. I think the beast Tiger boys are actually slept on a lot. They're actually a lot better than people think. Like they just, they can surprise mm -hmm. you with how much damage they put out. I've been impressed with them. Um, I've told these in not short handed you want, or, or you want to take it away, you 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I can. Uh, <laughs> I could definitely, I could definitely take over for you here. So we're gonna go the next one on the top of the tennis. Sherman Messer says, "Adam, just stand perfectly still. Stand perfectly still. Nobody will ever know." <laughs> so uh, Josh McMillan, third in Australia, is bringing sisters. Oh, and Adam was even nice enough to not have the abbreviations. So I can actually read this and not make a complete fool of myself. What a nice I'm, guy! I'm typing, I'm typing them out for you right now. What a nice guy. All right, so it's Valorous Heart, Order of Our Martyred Lady. So it's got Celestine, 10, 10, 9 Sacrosins, two Crusaders, Dialog- Dialogus? What the heck is that? Dialogus, yep. Dialogus, sorry, sorry, I got it now. Dogmatist, even even without the abbreviations, I'm still I'm still embarrassed myself. <laughs> Dogmata, five Zephyrim, Kenaness, Morvan, of course, Morvan, yep. you have to have Morvan, five Sisters, two more Crusaders, four Repentia, five Dominions, seven Zephyrim, two times five Retributors, and two Rhinos. Wow. Oh, I was telling you, <laughs> have the Adeptus Soritas actually get the code cracked to have to go all the way. This list might do it. Sacrosins I'm calling it. I'm calling there. it right now. I don't. Well, I don't is... even want to. I mean, we're going to hear the rest of the list, but I'm. I'm calling. You know, I. I was all behind Liam. There's the win, but I'm going with Josh here. I, th- I think this might actually do it. Wow! Just going. I don't even need to know the rest of them. Just the sisters. Well, I want to hear the rest of the here. list, but I. I think this. The. The. This faction here has been is has every single tool that it needs. And I stand by that. It can't, they can win, but it's, do you have enough of, of one thing or the other to hang in there? And I think this list does. Hmm. I, I could see that. Yeah, that's... To, to make it, you've got to make it through all the rounds, the gauntlet, right. the, the, the difficult rounds, the playing to the winner's bracket. And, and sometimes I think that's where some decision points in the list, you know, could, could fight against you in those. Mm, and so, mm-hmm. you know, if you have subject to variants, I think this list is insulated against variants and could go all the way. Uh, I think I like I'm back it. and doing, doing okay. Is that true? Yeah, you are. You were Tell good. me where okay. I'm wrong about what so, you just heard. Uh, you are not wrong. Josh Papillon has been taking this list solely for the last three months. And he's, I think he's dropped like two or three games in the last three events. So he, he usually loses like one game. Um, if he loses one game, that means he's almost definitely going to be top five, top three in CanCon. Because one thing that's unique to, sorry, not CanCon, to um, uh, Adelaide Uprising. One thing that's unique about Uprising and CanCon before it, the Primogenitor, um, everybody plays all eight rounds. Everybody. There's no cutoff to the finals. Okay. Am I doing bad? No, you're no, good. You're good. Keep going. Every, 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 oh, stop okay. moving. Okay. Stop moving. And okay. Making the camera go a bit crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. Any, any time you have a Shark Tank event like CanCon, like Uprising, um, when you get to the, let's say, round five, round six, there aren't brackets or anything, but the, the, the first person, the person who comes first is the undefeated person, the undefeated player. Mm-hmm. Technically, you could win going seven and one, but it's kind of never happened before. Um, so... What usually happens is the people just it, the win path for the winner is always the same, going undefeated, the person who comes first. But all the people underneath, the second, third, fourth, five, six, the top ten, essentially have to play four games against other top ten people. I played I, in twenty, I think it's twenty eighteen to twenty nineteen. I think I played against like four of the top five ITC players uh, in that year. Like, and we had to just play each other because that was how CanCon is. Because if you're in the top of the rankings, you just have to keep playing guys in the top of the rankings. And it's it's an absolute shark tank. And Josh is going to do very well here. Um, moving on, Josh Pope is up next, num- ranked number six in Australia. He's playing a Crusher Stampede, Little Life, and of course, he's got oh, a, a Patrol, Flyer, Swarm Lord, two times three Warriors, a Lictor, Maliceptor, two Dimecarons, the big old Dim Sims, um, yep. a Scythe, and a Barb Hero Jewel, and a Harpy. And there is one noted missing portion of this list and i'm really curious what you guys think about it but there's no hive guard well okay but let, let's let's ask this question here the diamond karen is that yesterday's news why is that coming back it is not yesterday's news, any, news anymore because of the uh the, the crusher stampede has brought him back into the forefront even though it went up in points this minus mm. one damage the extra attacks he gets he will yeah. kill anything in close combat and everyone gets naturally and, the, and that would mm. go ahead Adam. it's the only thing in your army that will negotiate terrain well yes and because of that even if it didn't kill as well as it did the fact that you can put a reliable big gribbly that can just go straight over that wall into the into the like the soft mm-hmm. bits is really good and then the additional yeah. time to compensate for the fact that so six hacks you know you, you don't go
Yeah. Adam is actually joining us from the moon, everyone. If you're just yeah, uh, tuning is. in, uh, we are getting, uh, to, uh, this is this is from space. It is the new telescope that's out there. Adam is there uh, and he is bringing us signals. And, mm-hmm. and that's what... <laughs> <laughs> <That's much. laughs> but the, no, 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 those, I think we got, we got the, we got the points that that was it. Yeah. So the Don McCarran, you're forcing your opponent to react. They cannot rely on the things. Uh, they can't uh, play the same way that if you just had a couple of more card effects or whatever on, on the table, they, they are forcing them into situations where they have to react. And, that, and that's great. You know, that's the excellent points. What's, yeah, what's exactly. next? What's the next list? We've got uh, Chris Wright, eighth in Australia. Same as last week, apparently. So heap of racked, one grot, 15 Hellions, and two times three Talos. So Drakari again. So it sounds like this was something he brought again the, to the tournament last week. And I wish we knew how well he did, actually. If Adam, if you know, that would be curious. I'd be curious to hear about it. Sure, but, he did great. Uh, He's still eighth in Australia. Well, so, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the, the communique from the moon, though. About five minutes, 10 minutes or so to get it back. Ping. He, he, he took one loss against Sprox and the first loss he's taken. Yeah. There Who's we go. Monster? So one loss. That's, I guess, like, why, why fix if it ain't broken? We, so we talked about how the, the 15 Hellions, you know, pr- probably mm-hmm. was going to be an asset. And it sounds yep. like that's the case and, and kind of defies convention on there, I th- potentially. Uh, but I think that it makes it even more of a target for some of your strategies. You get more value out of the yeah. CP you already have. That's absolutely and why those kind of units are there. When, when you can get more value out of an army list, an army that already mm-hmm. has a ton of value, then you you figured out something beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Getting one CP strats that affect 15 guys, it's phenomenal if you can get that kind of value out of it. And again, trade it in to something. That if you As long as you're trading up, they will get their, they'll get their points back every game, and it's it's fantastic. Yeah, it's telling us saying took seventh overall, only lost to the tournament winner. Thanks a lot for the chat helping us out there. Thank you, chat. That is perfect to know. That's exactly what we're looking for. This is why we have to do this live, guys, because you help us out with this kind of stuff. All right. And then last but not least, Ben Warrior. That is an amazing last name. Ninth in Australia, bringing Admech, a Lucian Battalion, Defense Cohort, a Cybernetic, a Datasmith, Dominus, Technoarchaeologist, three times three Breachers, three times five Corpuscari, Two more cybernetic data smiths. Wow. An X 101 oh. and two, five, five castle and battle bots. Wow. How, look, you've heard me say it for <laughs> months now. Yeah. You've heard have... me say it for months. There... Dustin, Wait, Paul, don't, Paul, don't doubt right? me again. No, no, I would. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I, I, I will never, I will never doubt you again. That was, you called it. You were talking about it. And here it is. Ninth in Australia, bringing it to this super major, and the I like it so well against you know a ton of things that are out there right now. This is one of those lists to where some some armies you're going to face against. They're like, wait a second, they have what stats? They do what? Are you, they can reflect wounds, yeah. really? They can go, they can do that with a data smith. Yeah, that strategy is only one CP. <laughs> what? There's going to be a lot of those games happening, and and Ben's got to figure it out. Yeah, this I I thought I wouldn't like seeing a list like this. I'm looking at it like I love it. This is this list actually makes me really happy. <laughs> I love they do, this. They also look really cool in the tabletop. They look so those, good. Yeah. I told you last time I'd make them all like Mega Man battle bots and stuff. I just I love these models. These and I'm willing to bet even more people are inspired after after the hammer bolter episode, you know. Yeah. <laughs> to, to Absolutely. Get Absolutely. Them. <laughs> get them on the table. But the, the, are they, they are a so you know, in the balance update, they got, you know what, they got a couple of points, you know, uh, I think it's 10 points a piece. So not a bunch. That is, that is like a thousand points of models right there. In it that. is. Uh, so, I mean, good luck uh, because that's one of those things you get them out of place. Uh, you have a bad, you have a bad round of rolling. It is a huge investment, but I mean, he is absolutely swinging for the fences with this. This is, this is the cleanup batter coming up to the plate, mm-hmm. ready to, he's calling a shot, going to try to knock it out of the park in every single game. And and it's, it's going to be up to his opponent to try to take it away from him. Yeah. You're putting a lot of pressure on your opponent with a list like this for sure. And I, I, I actually like that style of play too. So those those battle bots, like you were saying too, people don't expect 
the amount that the, the, the things that they do, not just their offensive capability, but the defensive capability. And they I'm curious to, face. Yeah, how, how he hasn't kid. Yeah, because some look. I mean, they they can when they when you're shooting at them on sixes when they're using their invulnerable set. You know, they can reflect wounds back. Yeah. You know, so there's there's a little bit of you know mm. you kind of have to really wrangle with them, and you can kind of trip yourself up along the way. Yeah. Um, and then they, there's a lot of options and how they get they equip their fist. Uh, so I am curious to how, how he's going with that. Yeah, for sure. I'd love to. I'd love to ask him what the, the theory is behind the two small units. I'd like to know what the what the, the two man brings to the table. Like, surely two five mans, this two a two man can't add more to two five mans, right? But I want to know I what mean, his, I want to know what his theory is. If you have ten of them already, why not bring two more? Yeah. If you if you bought if you your own 12, twelve, right? <laughs> yeah, if you, if you own, own twelve. 12. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm already. <laughs> We already have, but so so there are multiple oh, different well, ways to to equip them. Maybe maybe a couple of them are you know always set to stand back, and maybe some of them are equipped to go forward with the you know flamers, mm. maybe shorter range. I I don't know that that's a that's it, but it probably is a situation of well, I already had twelve, you know, mm. don't get to play with all twelve very often because it's eight million points. But so, for this event, I know people are bringing X Y Z thing, and you know, thick city goes down to this. Uh, Crusher Stampede's going to struggle with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. There isn't there isn't much that just on paper can't absorb it. I'm not going to change my pick. I was committed to the Adeptosaurus. You know, <laughs> <we're taking laughs> it down. But this, you, you, you this, definitely didn't read um, this. That's how we know Paul didn't read ahead yeah, because if he would have seen this. He would have definitely picked this yeah, one instead. Yeah, yeah. I um I have one thing to point out here about these five lists. So five of the five top players attendance as per the ITC rankings, four of them are taking lists that leverage mass minus one damage. Four out of the five. Only Chuck McMillan, the sisters player, is not. We have a we have Liam Hackett who's playing with rocket trucks, trucks, kill rigs, um, scrap jets. We have Josh Pope playing, you know, Ram Crusher Stampede. Jaguar. We have a we have a thick city list and we have um, a defense cohort list, all leveraging minus one damage as their main modus operandi. The reason that they are worth taking. So it is very interesting. Because Stellan Rowas mm-hmm. don't care about that. Things in silence. We are, everybody needs some time. You need some time. We are show. back. Uh, yeah. G6 branch is the feed. Okay. No, we the feed. We are, you know, this, I often uh, joke about our, my constant battle with production, but it is not production. Production is doing everything they can to keep us going. Uh, <laughs> and thanks a lot. But we are now on the third installment of the Thursday show. The third Thursdays. Thursday third show Thursdays. That, that was what we were going Thursday. for third time's the charm we're, we're trying a new gimmick here we're seeing if uh how how we can potentially alienate all the live watchers it won't no seriously no. <laughs> uh but thanks for being patient with us and uh doing that so again that was actually saved y'all for making your your predictions about who's bringing this thing down dustin i don't know if they heard you but what refresh us what, you're predicting the orcs is that what you're i'm i'm predicting those orcs i really like that list i think it's the perfect orc list and i uh i'm down with it I like it. I think that's going to be good. Ian Harris says it is his first time here. Uh, it, his Maybe his fault. No, you did not jinx us. And thanks for tuning <laughs> in for that first time. Uh, and, and thank you. <laughs> Adam, who's winning this thing? It's not, not Adam. Adam. Okay. No. Adam. I know for I know I've spoken to you. Going with the Orcs. There we go. Go with the orcs. orcs. That makes sense. Leave me. I've typed everything out. I'm just going to be listening. 
no no man left behind no, man uh, left, no, we, no we, team member we, we're no dragging person. you along with us adam don't left worry behind. we got you but buddy i want to look i know we only have a few minutes left but i want to give the nottingham gt of course it's it's due here 315 players seven round juggernaut super mm-hmm. super major 315 players in nottingham of all places yeah. Uh, Dustin, run us down the stats. Maybe, maybe I won't this. opine about the Adeptus Soritas or the Grey Knights this time. Uh, but, nope. uh, but look at that. Look at one of these. Go for it. Oh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna burn through these because this is some crazy numbers here. So the Imperial Super Faction, there are five Imperium, 15 Sisters, 16 Custodes, four Admech, 14 Astra Militarum, 15 Grey Knights, 15 Imperial Knights, Space Marine Super Faction, two Astartes, 12 Dark Angels, seven Space Wolves, six Blood Angels, four Ultramarines, three Salamanders, four Black Templars, two Raven Guard, seven Iron Hands, eight Death Watch. Chaos Super Faction, there are two Chaos Soup, three Chaos Space Marines, 19,000 Suns, 13 Death Guard, six Demons, and six Renegade Knights. I thought you were actually going to say 19,000 Death Guard armies. That's what I thought. <laughs> I wanted to. It's, it's over <laughs> 9,000. Xeno Super Faction, 25 Necrons. Holy smokes. 33 Orcs. And there's six Tau. About, there are actually right. Tau. There are actually Tau here. Hive Mind Super Faction, 15 Tyranids. Probably all so Crusher that, That's actually the, the, the most surprising thing is that we've seen, you know, again, seeing people opt in for just all the Tyranids. Yep. So main Tyranids, no Hive Mind. And I, I don't know if that's a mistake or not. I it's I think it's, I'm not gonna call it a mistake. It's a it's a it's a choice, it's a preference. And a lot of people they don't want to put those points in because they you know 175 points, that's a walking hive tyrant. That's that's a, that's a lot of things. You, but that's, that's, a, that's a devil's gaunt squad. Yep. Like, it's a lot of things that you don't get to add in for. I, so I get it. And you don't, it's not essential because it feels bad. I know why a lot of people don't take it because it feels bad when you go first and you don't need those blips. Well, l- let's actually look at it. And you get to listen to, you don't need it again, right? On the other side, maybe from the person that's that's sleeving up this, this army or what have you, is that what comes forward to Alpha Strike in today's world, what actually yeah. gets up there in today's yeah. world? What do you actually worry about, about? Right, planes aren't really a problem anymore. You see two of them, and even two planes won't kill all your hive guard if you're even bringing them. So it's not it's not as essential in the meta right now. So I get why it's a choice right now. And again, a lot of tier new players probably just want to start getting their best in faction too. The Crusher Stampede, they don't need it like we talked about. So it's, yep. it's not, it's surprising, but it's not surprising. Okay. Yeah. Fair. No, yes. We talk it out. That's why, that's why we talk about these. That's things. why we talk about these things. That's why we do this. All right. The Eldari super faction to finish it off. There's five mixed Eldari, 26 Drukari. No real surprise there. Four Harlequins and two Asuriani. I so would expect actually podium. more Asuriani. Uh, I, craft worlds. I really, really would have expected with this number of player, with this number of oh, players I, yeah, that okay, we've that's seen. Fair. That's the fair. fact that we've seen what, how many Tau, how many Tau are there? There's six Tau. That's, that's true. Tau are outnumbering the Asuriani and the Harlequins and a bunch of different uh, space green factions. Actually, there's more Tau than there are Admech in this tournament. Interesting. Let that sink into your head a little bit. Maybe That's I mean maybe I right know now. something about the terrain. Maybe the terrain rules there are, you know, that's maybe that's true. it. Maybe that's it. There's no other playing against. So the podium is orcs at 33, Drukari at 26, and then Necrons at 25. We've actually seen a lot of Necrons across the pond. I, was, yeah. I remember. I remember there being a lot of Necron lists. Uh, Necrons are, st- are are still pretty good. I mean. Uh, it's one of those to where I, I they they're one of those factions that does really well in that grindy type game, mm-hmm. and that might be more the play style over there. Look, at, I know we got some folks in chat uh, that are I think playing this weekend, so let it live and over a ride on that assessment. Is it a grindy type environment? What is the terrain like? How is that influencing what we see in these li- in the list makeup? Mm-hmm. I'm curious. Let us know, Chad. Come on, you know this stuff. <laughs> Uh, so let's, let's run down a couple of lists, then we'll pick a winner. And then we actually, so anybody that's been a long time listener, uh, you'll know that we have the Fuego Rapido coming up. And if you're first time here, uh, know that we have a segment we call the Fuego Rapido that we're going to run down a series of topics. And there, most of them don't have anything to do with 40K, but we will see. There may be a couple that snuck in this time. But they are always awesome and hilarious. So they're great. All right. So top players in attendance. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Manny Chima is there with Drukari. So first in the UK, fourth in the world, Artists in the Flesh Battalion, 
with Drazar, Succubus, 104 racks? Who's Gordon counting? The Archon, Archon, Homunculus, 63 racks. He is a Sith Lord. Uh, this, so this that is, is the guy 167 racks. This is the guy that brought 120 some odd rangers and stuff before. Chima, well, you are an animal. You know what deals with that? Castellan robots isn't going to be the new guy. <laughs> Not the close combat. They don't. They don't have enough attacks. That's uh, just too many racks. I don't Rex, think they make it halfway uh, across the table against it. But anyway, that's another. It's oh. not a. Not, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, that that's a hot take. That's for sure. That that is a hot take. Wow. Okay. Next up, we got we got Malik, another man myth legend, second in the UK, six in the world. He's bringing nids. He's bringing the Crusher Stampedes, Leviathan Patrol, Super Heavy Ogs. Oh, he's bringing the Herodon, isn't he? Flyrant, Swarm Lord, two times three warriors, six Hive Guard, Lictor, Scythe, Herod, Harpy, and a Herod. And oh, you're an animal too. What's going on across the pond? Oh my God. I love these lists though. They are, they are having fun before Vegas. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody brought a Herod in. It's actually not bad in the, in the Crusher Stampede, but it's just so many, so many points. And if you can even deploy it and get it to do something on turn one, but, uh, it's a great. It's, what, it's do you, a, what do you think? It's a magnet. It? It's basically a bullet magnet. You know, you're oh, yeah. you're, you're you're kind of defining what your what your opponents do uh, because they're kind of distracted by it, and maybe that's just enough for you to maneuver around the table and do you know start scoring points or put in a position to get the lock on uh, on the game. Yep. No, that makes perfect sense too. And then we've got Greg Chamberlain, fourth in the UK, Mortarians Anvil Battalion. He's got a. Biologist, Putrefier, Tallyman, Demon Prince, Lord of Contagion, 10 Cultists, 2 times 10 Poxwalkers, 2 Vulcan Tempters, 3 and three six Death Shroud, Fly with Bite Spawn, 3 Plague Burst Crawlers, going hard for best Death Guard in the world, according to our uh, Man on the Moon. So that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yep. Uh, and look, the, sometimes the, the Plague Burst Crawlers, again, just get you points. And mm. uh, the very secondaries and you're able to kind of hang in there. Even if you lose a game or two, uh, you're still going to be put in really good position, uh, podium wise, points wise, uh, especially for ITC points and faction points. Again, that's very, it's very important. Everything here, uh, and especially in these larger events, uh, could potentially replace one of your scores you got in the earlier rounds for the ITC. We, we actually don't talk a lot about how to gain points other than winning in the ITC, but you know, there's, there's a lot uh, on the line here for some of these players. That's true, especially with a like, super major of this many people. You get, it's all worth a lot of points. Yeah. If you just no matter, as long as you go, you know, top 50, top, even top 100, you, you get a lot of points for it. It's pretty crazy. Next up, we have Mike Porter, seventh in the UK with T Sons, Cult of Duplicity Battalion, and Cult of Time Patrol. So, an Exalted Sorcerer, Demon Prince, four times five rubrics, Vulcan, temp, Vulcan Tempters. Is this, it says Contemptors. Maybe it's two or just one. One, thank you. <laughs> Two times five spawn, <laughs> Rhino, Aramon, five Rubik's, and ten Scarab Occult Terminators. I love the spawn. I love Araman here. I like that the, that he's kind of moved away from the double contemptors, you know, but not completely, which is cool because it still is a, is a threat, uh, but opened up that, you know, whatever, 160 points and put it right in the spawn, which is an amazing choice. Yeah, I'm, I'm becoming more of a fan of the spawn. I didn't like them at nah, when don't, I first started seeing them, whatever. but uh, they are... They're impressing me lately. They're they've been doing really well for that. I, I, I they're they're durable. They can do a bit of damage. They're surprising, actually. Well, surprising. and the thousand sun stratagem you can use in the middle of the game. You know, you don't necessarily right. have to invest CP into them until unless you want to and when you want to, which is true. Uh, a thing. And they're just sometimes they just. I mean, they move fairly decently fast. They can, you know, if you get the right roll, you know, with uh, you know, even when you're not using the stratagems. In combat, you really can do a lot of damage, and they 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 might, they trade well. I think they trade very well, actually, because they're not that expensive for what they do. They actually they're actually uh, I'm not gonna say undercosted, but they're borderline. They're they're well costed. They're well. Yeah, I don't I don't think that they are undercosted. I think it's still they, they cost enough points to where yeah. you think, do I really want to take this thing that is, you know, it it can be a like an actual glass cannon. Yeah, they're absolutely. not a cannon because they have no guns, you know, but they're a glass hammer. Uh, maybe the glass hammer. Yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. Like, that bad? Not, I, I don't know. Would you, no one would ever want a glass hammer. They're a good enough unit with, without a ton of defense. That's why a, glass hammers are great. Cause you hit something and they die and then it shatters. That's exactly what you wanted to do. Right. Fair enough. Crystal sword right. from D and D crystal whatever. sword. Okay. Sure. Crystal sword, glass hammer. What, whatever the heck you're using something, you know something. what we're saying. 
Something that breaks after you hit something and kill it. There you go. That's <laughs> we've, we've narrowed it down. Uh, and then finishing it off, we have Michael Costello with Death Watch, Kill Team Strike Force, Captain on a Bike, Primaris Chaplain on a Bike, Primaris Librarian, Dominus Kill Team with five aggressors and five heavy intercessors. Good God. Three Pro Pro Proteus Kill Teams, two Terminators, one bike, one Vanguard Vet, six veterans in the one, and uh, one Proteus Kill Team with five Vanguard Vets and five veterans. This... Uh this death watch list is, is probably going to be one to watch. Wow. Uh, yeah. Look that at five that. aggressors, five heavy intercessor squad. That's terrifying, but I'm a GSC nid player, right? So of course, that's well, so let, let's talk about that uh, for one second is that the aggressors typically never get into range because you're able to, they don't have, they have zero ablative wounds. Mm -hmm. The heavy intercessors yeah. in this case are able to uh, uh, allow you to attack from a little bit longer range. And then they act as, as basically wound caddies to get the aggressors in range. They are a lot of wounds. That's for sure. So they can actually help out those aggressors a lot. So they can just stay on the table. You don't have to worry about putting them up in some like a land raider or whatever the heck you'd have to transport them in now. You I could not put them in a land raider. Yeah. What can you put them in? Though that primary thing. You the, can't the put thing them in anything. Awesome. <laughs> really? <laughs> Wow, um, you can't put Gravis in an Impulsor. Oh, that's right. You might be able to put. I don't know if you can put them in the uh, Carv Corvus Black Star. I don't. I don't know if it's got. I can't remember if it has that rule or not. Oh, um, that is a Death Watch thing. Oh, maybe. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, but uh, oh, but really, apparently, this is the number one Death Watch player in the world too, right now. So you, I mean, this guy knows what he's doing with these. If you've ever played against heavy intercessors in any faction. They they can be very difficult to dig out, mm. and and so they're going they're you're going to get those aggressors in, into range, and they are deadly at range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Uh, it's actually I'm I'm surprised we haven't seen many heavy intercessors on the table in terms of a lot of the space marine lists. They, they hide they, in they, some of those other factions. So in those I bet in those yeah. Astartes factions or in some of those other ones, you know, they, they I mean of course they work better in other factions, especially if the, if that faction has like a bulge yeah, component or, or whatever. But they are a good unit, like a, a really good unit. Mm -hmm. And especially if you find yourself needing something to put in your backfield, you can definitely put the right. heavy intercessors back there. And yeah, it's, it's true too. Real Wait, I actually, to think about. I remember them like uproar when these things were launched, people were mad that this is broken. Why are you, why are you inventing something like this? And I'm like, I think they're actually perfect in Death Watch, and I've never seen them with aggressors before. And no, never seen this. This is amazing. I think this is yeah, this will this will be replicated if, uh, especially if it works. Oh, um, if it does well, is is getting replicated everywhere. That's the that's yeah. that's the only crux of when you do well at turn with these lists, guys. It's going to get net listed, but. Uh, imitation is the best compliment. So there yeah. you go. No, no, there's no, there's no, that's not a stigma. Like, the, like, no. it's like not use something that works. That's what, that's what we're doing here, especially in a competitive setting. Let's take a quick break. Then we're going to come back into our Fuego Rapido segment. Hang in there with us. It's going to be a really fun thing, uh, especially if you're new here the first time. Uh, you know, we're going to get a little silly if we haven't already. We'll see you oh, in yeah. a minute. At Frontline Gaming, we make the best tabletop gaming mats in the universe. Our mats are durable, rollable, foldable, wipeable, and storable. Oh, and they look damn great, too. Join the thousands of tournament regulars and garage gamers who use our mats to bring their gaming surfaces to life. To ensure quality, Frontline Gaming mats are custom made one at a time. Printed with high quality ink, our immersive designs stay crisp and are available in a wide range of styles and sizes. So whether you're playing a war game or a skirmish game, whether you're fighting over an alien tundra, fantastical forest, or real world setting, there's a great looking battlefield for you. Our gaming mats are printed on extremely durable neoprene backing, so they won't slide around the table, and they're thick enough to stay flat, protecting what's underneath and allowing for slight uneven surfaces. We know from experience that an easily portable gaming surface is just better. Every mat comes with a sturdy nylon zip-up bag for storage and transportation. Whether your next battle is in your home or at the local game store, you'll be able to unroll your FLG mat and get gaming right away. Our products are all made and tested by passionate gamers at Frontline Gaming HQ right here in the USA. It's time to take your battlefield to a new level. Frontline Gaming, champions of tabletop. We're back. We are. This is, yeah, hopefully, you know, we're back. 
Thanks for hanging in there. Seriously, Chad, uh, ser- appreciate everyone hanging in through our difficulties tonight. Uh, but here's our segment with the Fuego Rapido. Uh, we give ourselves two minutes to run down just topics that you know production throws at us. Uh, give our, at the end of the two minutes, we cut it off and move on to the next topic. As soon as the clock starts, uh, we're going to fire it off and, and uh, see where this conversation goes. What's the best place to eat in Vegas? Uh, Dustin, what do you think? So I had to ask my wife about this because I actually, there's an Italian place that we go to every time that we go down there. I believe it's called Casa de More. So obviously if you know you're Italian, uh, first of all, my accent, and it was terrible, but it's like, it's for couples, but it's like a family run restaurant. They pick you up in a limo and you get taken there and it is fresh Italian homemade food. It is absolutely incredible. Obviously, you have to make reservations about the pick you up the limo, take you there, take you back. Oh, go there every wow. every time we go to Vegas. It's amazing. Obviously, a bunch Damn. of suggestions getting thrown out in the chat. That does sound good. I don't know if I can beat that. Mine, I think, is you know, I look at the best place, the best time I've ever had eating in Vegas was at the buffet at the Bellagio because it was just so, so <laughs> good. And, so, yeah. I'm not a buffet type person most of the time, but you know, just everything I could have chosen was absolutely amazing. Was that we Caesars? Were, we, were that we went there. there. No, no, the the one at the Bellagio, in my opinion, was better. Caesars is pretty good. Remember, we went like five minutes before they closed at Caesars, so they were like, okay. "Here, get your get your mm, yeah, yeah. your lobster and get yeah. out." <laughs> was not what they said. They were very nice, but that was. About- <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they give the sigh when you come in. Ah, oh, these guys at the end of the show. Uh, hey, look, we had dude, a show to do. It was they. They gave us looks though, because it was like us and that like when you are the big nerd marching close time, and we were just <laughs> we were just like bring it. What you got? <laughs> Good desserts, but that's the thing. The buffet, the Bellagio, but also Giordano's. You know, it was right there next to the place. It was a that we could always get a big table there. We could always get you know, mm. a, a, you know something, some nice comfort food. Uh, and then a, then a decent beer. It's, it's, uh, but there's so many, you know, somebody puts out any Gordon Ramsay restaurant. Yeah. I want, uh, my mission this time is to eat as many tasty burgers as I possibly can, uh, Ooh, at the LVO. Nice. So you hit us up with suggestions. Next one. Okay. Who would win in an anchorman style battle, oh. uh, Ooh. from frontline gaming network shows the Thursday show, which is the, I mean, I, I don't want to say what the answer is because I'm still reading the question um, versus chapter tactics uh, versus signals from the front line uh, versus Grim After Dark. Who would win that style of battle? You go uh, first, I, it's, not even a, it's not even a freaking question, right? Like, so uh, uh, Grim After Dark, um, <laughs> <laughs> like Danny, take one swing and giggle and run off into the distance. <laughs> And so, it's not so a cool. not a contest, not a contest at all. That's just a rollover. Signals. Um, I, I've met I've met both Kicker and Seth. I stayed with Seth Seth at Nola. Put on all of a night. But Kicker would be like really enthusiastic and then really not enthusiastic. And so, if between the three of us, you can overcome one Seth. I think we got this down pat. So there we go. We have a tactics. strategy. Okay. Okay. Tactics. Jesus. I'm not say <laughs> that I could beat all of them by myself, but I could probably beat all of them by myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I think uh, Adam covered it pretty well. Like, the, there we the go. Next next topic. Show. That was an easy one. Well, the, the, he comes onto this show uh, in a tank top every week, and you think he wouldn't? He wouldn't be able to? Like, yeah, I take all you guys at once. I, Paul and I, Dustin, I just, they're just they're just my backup. They'll watch. They'll like sit in the back of this, just snapping their fingers I, at me while I'm beating the crap out of all you. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the clock. By the way, hi everyone. Uh, it's it's your favorite servo. Uh, also, I think the answer is can Seth take all three of you by himself? Oh. Huh. Let's go. He's a big Look, man. Ricky he's might. a big, big man. Yeah, he's a, he, he <laughs> I did identify Seth as like the threat <laughs> in all of this. <laughs> you don't know yeah. what I know. So yeah. here we go. That's the end of the uh, end of the clock. Next, next one is if you could receive a fully painted army, any I guess I know I think I think it's uh, Warhammer forty thousand base, but any army, Age of Sigmar or Warhammer forty thousand, and just play it. You know, no, no consideration to, to the hobby time or the cost or whatever. What would it be? Now, are we talking oh. if you already own it, or like is this just like the best one to and get? Maybe it just dream anything. army or, or yeah, something. Something army. that's yeah. you've been on the fence uh, from throwing together in the past, maybe for any any reason. 
Yeah. If Adam cuts out, I'll answer for him. Adam, you got an answer for that? Oh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm coalescing between two or three different options right now. If you have one, go for it. Uh, see, for me, and I'm gonna say what they used to be because this is, that's, that's what I played. It would be dark elves, because, from and I'm fantasy. talking dark elves, and I don't mean, I don't mean the new Age of Sigmar. I mean the fantasy, like the dark elves. Yeah. Like the cold ones, and because uh, I have some of, I have some of like the old uh, like the spears and the hydras. I, I love that model line, and I have wood elves, I have high elves, and it's just like I always wanted dark elves, but it's like what's why it's would I? It's funny do that? P- people are are firing off fantasy armies Ooh, and sigma armies yeah, in the chat because I tell you, there's so many buckles and pouches on those armies. It's a little bit intimidating yeah, exactly. sometimes. Mm-hmm. Exactly, mm-hmm. it's a nightmare to paint some of these things. But okay. they're gorgeous models. Paul, what's your what's your army? Let's go. Uh, hey, I'm running the show Let's here. Go. Production. <laughs> <laughs> Lumineth Realm Lords is actually my answer because those oh, models are nice. glorious, uh, nice. and and I want, I want, I will, I will have, and I will start that army, uh, but I have not uh, done it yet. But if yeah, if I could just in a, in a Warhammer forty thousand, if it could just, ma- I, it could jump from my mind to painted models. Harlequins is definitely it. Ooh, Ooh, nice, beautiful. nice, nice. Yeah, Adam, I have, have, two, you I have... Adam, I've got two that. answers. Unfortunately, I've got two answers. One is a fully painted OG Bretonian army, just because you can't get the models, and, and I could never yeah. do it justice. And the second one is, I think, oh, got to wait till next week. Right, we're out of time. <laughs> gotta wait till. So, okay, here we go. Uh, for <laughs> is there a type of sandwich that you shouldn't put a pickle on? Put a Dustin, pickle on. Or pair them? Okay. Yeah. I, my my question ooh, is. Ooh. What you can't ask person? a question with no, a question. No, no. What, kind of, what kind of person are you to not have a pickle with any sandwich? That's what I want there's, to know. Because there's the right answer. <laughs> well, no, there's no right or wrong answer. Jay? Absolutely, you do. Uh, well, and, no, okay. Why with it on the side or on the sandwich? <laughs> so my my answer <laughs> is an ice cream sandwich. Oh, oh, that's mm. that's cheating. <laughs> I will still have a pickle with my ice cream sandwich, Paul. No, that's cool. Look, look, there is no wrong answer. There is no wrong answer in this situation. But I'm just curious if there is one that you stood out as particularly uh, to take umbrage to uh, for uh, pairing pickles with any kind of sandwich. You know what? Heck, I dip the pickle in the ice cream sandwich. Oh, here we go. And See, and Dustin then... is purely a gene uh, okay. We're so grumpy. Uh, next time, next time, next circle. time I see you, Dustin. All right, all right here's the mandate. Paul, next time you see Dustin, next time I see Dustin, we're going to stream it. And he's going to do that. Done. Yeah. I got. I'm buying Please. you an ice cream and it like a jar a good of the pickle. most fun. It, wherever, funky, wherever we are, uh, whatever we're city we're in, ones. we'll find the most interesting yeah. pickles and the most interesting ice cream, and ice we'll, cream eat, we'll make sandwiches. Right. Sandwich it has to be the sandwich. We will, we will make sandwiches. That's uh, that's good. I'm, I'm completely down with that. Sounds like an interesting challenge. But I, look, there is there's no <laughs> wrong answer. But is that's kind of because there's know, no wrong answer. Are, but that sounds wrong. Pickles are awesome. That's hilarious. Pickles are so uh, n- I think that's it. Here we go. We'll yep, go to the next go. one. In the Star Wars universe, what color lightsaber would you have? Ooh, who's Adam, first? start with you. Red. <laughs> You're assist lord too? You're Straight up red. You're a bad, Dark bad, side. bad, bad man. I, I'd throw up uh, a gang. Uh, but, but with your yeah, internet connection, uh, it would be the shortest saber ever. <laughs> It would it would start going out and then just flop <laughs> and disintegrate. So it's a shiv. It's a shiv. I got a I got a, <laughs> it's a light shiv. Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> uh, Dustin, what about you? Uh, purple, dark purple, dark purple. Okay, dark purple. Oh, yeah, for sure. Got a yeah. bit of that their feel to it. A little little evil, but not quite evil. Would you go like uh, new school with like crackles and stuff? You, you know, or are you just? I don't need like, fancy just, stuff. Just, does just your, your does your lightsaber come to a point? I like the mm-hmm. idea of a point, even though it's completely redundant and doesn't do anything separate. It would look cool. I kind of like that idea. Yeah, I like that. I'm going green, with... just traditional old school green. Just mm-hmm. Luke, just Jedi, Return of the Jedi. Classic, really. Just yeah. green. Uh, you know, there there are so many moments in the series to where you know when they when they ignite those lightsabers and it's just like. Yeah, uh, but that's it. The, and the coolest moments are there's the there's the you know the green, and then there's the red. Although, where does Darth Maul fit into that? Because in Episode One, 
when they're there, when they, you know, they're about, they're trying to get in the palace and Darth Maul comes out and spins it out and then ignites both sides of the lightsaber. Is that, that's another one. Is that one of the coolest lightsaber? Does that fit in the echelon of coolest lightsaber ignitions? Bonus Fuego Rapido. Mm. I think so. I think that was the most, most impactful one. Because as soon as you did that and you know the mold was broken, the rest of them weren't that impressive. Yeah, I think it was actually ruined a little bit because they advertised it in like the trailers and stuff. So you yeah, saw it before. And yeah. if you didn't see the trailers, the impact of that would have been a, like way, way better. Mm. Yeah, well, that's the end of our show, folks. It has been, I know this has been fraught with peril. It's been a rocky road, uh, keeping on the ice cream theme uh, that have, that has got us to this with point. But we, but seriously, everyone in the, in the chat, Wolf Priest, Carl, uh, Nurgle, Matt, uh, some of the names I can't pronounce on the fly here, uh, but st- keep staying with us and keeping it active and interactive this entire time. If you're listening to us on podcast aggregators after the fact, we do a live show uh, where that's where we're, inter- you know, that's where the chat's coming up from, but we really appreciate y'all listening to us after the fact. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave us some five-star reviews wherever you're listening to us. That is one of the ways that people, you know, that you tell the algorithms that other people should be listening to us as well. And it is always a pleasure to talk to you all about the tournaments coming up each and every week. The list we see calling all the winners or some of the winners let us know where we're wrong uh, in the comments or the chat it's been a great week that's right no we will see y'all next week tune in gonna see us over the weekend as well we'll see y'all soon see you in vegas